Hi, I'm Tom Baldwin. I'm a trade unionist and socialist coalition candidate for Mayor of Bristol. We've heard over and over that these are unprecedented times and it has been a hard year for most, a harrowing year for some. But not all of the problems that we faced are unprecedented so much as they are old issues rearing their heads in a new way. The pandemic really has shone a light on the inequality and the injustice of the capitalist society. It has deepened its divisions and worsened its problems. To use the contemptuous phrase of Boris Johnson, the bodies have piled high as the government has put profits of big business ahead of people's health. People have been sent into unsafe workplaces. <clears throat> the provision of PPE of test and trace has been hampered by entrusting their delivery to profit-making private firms. We've seen a colossal waste of public money, much of which has made it into the hands of Tory donors and friends. And most of the effective measures to protect health and safety in the workplace had to be fought for and won by trade union action by workers themselves. And of course, other workers have had to try and get by on 80% of their wages for over a year when many were struggling on 100%. And when that furlough scheme ends, who knows how many of them will find that they don't have a job to go back to, as we find that the crisis in the economy is not solely due to COVID, but rather that that has triggered a wider crisis of capitalism caused by the failings of that system itself. On the other hand, though, it's not been a bad year for everybody. The super rich in general have had a very good crisis. The wealth of UK billionaires has risen by one third. But there is never enough profit for these greedy bosses. The shameful behaviour of British gas management who have fired thousands of workers in order to try and force them to accept new contracts on far worse paying conditions is unfortunately a sign of things to come. Big business will try and use unemployment to drive a race to the bottom and they will be aided and abetted in that by their representatives in the Tory party. So who is going to represent us? Where is the voice in politics for ordinary people, for the working class and for the middle class? Who stands for those NHS and care workers who are fighting for a 15% wage rise? Who stands for those who are working in retail and construction who've had to work through the pandemic? Who stands for the students who've had to pay £9,000 a year in fees for online courses and extortionate rents for housing they can't even stay in? Who stands for the pensioners who are getting one of the lowest state pensions in Europe? Who stands for the unemployed, for the disabled people and the carers who face losing the lifeline of the £20 increase in universal credit or those on other benefits who never even got that in the first place? And who stands for the next generation, for those leaving school this summer who don't know where they'll be able to find work, even if they'll even have the option of the low paid and insecure shop or bar work that has become the norm in recent years. Clearly, that is not the Labour Party and the Keir Starmer. They have given up even on the pretense of opposition to the Tories. In the face of catastrophe after catastrophe, they have offered only abstentions. Instead, the Labour leadership have turned their fire on the left of their own party. No effort has been spared to try and extinguish the flame of hope that was lit by Corbyn's anti-austerity policies. Members have been suspended, candidates removed, even whole branches shut down and the Labour right would sooner destroy that party than they would let the left ever take control again. But still, our class will fight back. We will have to. Just as we fought on health and safety, we will have no choice but to fight for our livelihoods, for pay, for housing and public services. But without a political voice, it feels like we're fighting with one hand tied behind our back. So that is why the Trade Unionist and Socialist Coalition was formed. And that is why we're standing in these elections. We want to help build that political voice, to help sow the seeds for a new Workers' Party. Tusk is a coalition that involves uh, the 80,000 strong RMT, that is the Rail and Maritime Transport Workers Union. It involves the Socialist Party, which I'm a member of. It involves many other unaligned uh, supporters who are growing in number, 
as people feel abandoned by Labour. And this year we've added the involvement of Resist, uh, the movement for People's Party led by ex-Labour MP Chris Williamson. So we are growing, we are developing. And yes, we're still a long way off of having the resources and the profile of the main parties. But you have to start somewhere. And these elections are an important part of raising the red flag of socialism again and building the foundations of a new party of the working class. But that doesn't mean all we're doing here is preparing for the future. Our standing in these elections has an impact right now. Local elections may not be glamorous, but what local councils do matters. They provide care services, repair roads, light streets, provide libraries, museums and parks and much more. And they have been battered by austerity in recent years. Bristol alone has lost £200 million in annual funding from the Tory government over the last decade. And yet, in the face of this, councils and mayors of all political stripes have been united in passing these cuts on to ordinary people. We are still being made to pay for the banking crisis of 2008, just as they will surely try and make us pay for this crisis too. But Tusk offers an alternative. We have put forward the possibility of resisting that austerity. If elected, we will move no-cuts budgets that are based on what our towns and cities need. Budgets that protect jobs and services by using the money that councils hold in reserve and their powers to borrow to offset government funding cuts for a time and to protect services. And just putting that part forward, I think, has had an impact. After years of telling us it was impossible, that is pretty much what Labour claimed to be doing uh, in Bristol this year. Of course, for them, it is, it's a cynical move, really, in an election year. But I don't think even that would have been done without us putting forward that alternative and making it impossible for them to claim nothing could be done. And yet, it misses the most important part of our anti-cut strategy. The only way that we can continue to hold off cuts and crucially to reverse the cuts of the recent past is the building of mass campaigns that can take on the government to mobilise ordinary people themselves in protests and strike action to demand that the Tories return the money that they have stolen from local councils up and down the country. Struggle is critical. Power concedes nothing without a demand. We would have none of the rights and the living standards that we have today if it wasn't for the struggles of the past. The government may appear to be strong opponent, but they've only been made to look that way by the weakness of the Labour opposition. We've seen glimpses of the Tories' real weakness in how they've been pushed into U-turn after U-turn uh, when campaigns have arisen, such as the campaign for free school meals led by Marcus Rashford. And we've seen this year too, how the economic argument for austerity has been exploded. How, when they considered it a political priority, when it was necessary to protect their system, they found billions upon billions for corona spending. Well, we need to make jobs, homes and all the other needs of our class priorities too. The other policies we put forward now can have an impact as well. If elected, we would build thousands of council homes. This is the third time I've stood for mayor and every time we've put that demand forward. It's vital that we address the housing crisis and only council ownership can ensure that homes are of good quality, have secure tenancies and genuinely affordable rents. And only council homes ensure that the money comes back to the city and doesn't just fill the pockets of private landlords and developers. And even making that argument has had an impact. After building less than 150 council houses in the last five years, Labour's Marvin Rees is now calling for more council house building, as are the Greens. But we need more in the way of housing policies. We would push to control private sector rents and to use landlord licensing to demand good quality, livable homes for all. It was proven at the start of the pandemic that it is possible to house homeless people when the political will is there to do so and it is a scandal that those people are back out on the streets now. We are putting forward many other policies that I, I don't have time to elaborate upon tonight. We call for the reversal of privatisation of care and other services and the taking of public transport into public ownership. These must be run as a service 
and not to turn a profit for shareholders. These policies give a glimpse of the type of socialist society that I want to see replace capitalism. One where the wealth produced by workers is held collectively by the whole of society rather than hoarded by the super rich. One where we can democratically decide how that wealth is invested in the interests of the majority and of the planet we all share rather than having a tiny minority making those decisions on the basis of what profits them the most. Tusk's policies also take aim at unemployment which will be a growing scourge that must be addressed. We call for a programme of useful public works to help create good, unionised jobs. And that would include not just house building, but a retrofitting of homes for energy efficiency. And we support the struggles of trade unions and of all workers to defend their jobs and conditions in the face of the boss's onslaught. Those struggles are going to be all the more necessary in the coming years, and that is why we also support the right to protest in the face of the Tory attempts to curtail, curtail that with the new uh, police bill. We don't want to see violence on demonstrations. But unlike the Labour Mayor Marvin Rees, we have not joined the great and the good in a one-sided condemnation of protesters. We have been clear that that violence was sparked by the police. Unlike all other parties... We have been there on those demonstrations to protect our democratic rights, as we were there on the Black Lives Matter demonstrations last year as well. Opposing racism is integral to socialist policies, and along with it, all the other forms of oppression and division of our class, like sexism, homophobia and transphobia. The united class, the working class, sorry, must be united in the struggles to defend its interests. Whatever the outcome of the elections tomorrow, then we support those struggles 100%, always have and always will. But as I said earlier, they will be stronger if they have a voice in politics that actively backs them. We need a political party that does not bow down before Tory demands for cuts or before the interests of big business. We need a party that is ours, that stands proudly for the working class and for a socialist alternative. That's what we're trying to build. So vote trade unionist and socialist to coalition tomorrow if you can. Vote for us with your first preference in the mayoral election vote to make sure that that vote gets counted. Um, but defending the interests of our class does not stop at 10 uh, tomorrow night when the ballot pay boxes close. We'll keep on fighting. We'll keep on building and we want you to join us. So if you like what you hear tonight, get in touch, get involved. Let's stand together, let's fight back and let's build a force that can win for the millions and not the millionaires. Thank you.